Hey, it's Harold. This is Deep Rag. We deep rag in two different places. Every day, I have a written journal that I deep rag in. And I also take transition walks going through this forest, a 39-degree morning. It's just past 11 o'clock in the morning. It's been raining all night. The mountains are getting a lot of snow. Yet we're out here. It says the transition walk is so important as this idea of trusting defragging is really, really a great daily discipline. Defragging is having an honest-to-God conversation with the self that you are, the one that's being controlled by other people. You know, that person in the mirror that looks like who? Sounds like who? Yeah, that's the person. And the question is, do you know who? I've been a daily writer for 29 years. Do you think that I know who I am? Who is my who? I have an idea. I'm getting closer every day. But the thing about being a human being is, is that every day we change. We evolve. We don't get used to the selves that we are. Unless we physically say, you know what? I can't do it anymore. So I'm just going to sit down and complain. Oh, I know so many of those people. And even though through the love of God and through patience, you try to hear their side and it's like, no, no, no. I'm only digging a hole to put my head in while they continue to steal all the sunshine. This is Defrag. Julia Cameron in her brand new book uh, brought up something that was very important. And it really did uh, touch my heart today. I've been studying Julia Cameron since July of 1994. Every book. Trust me, every book. I spoke for two and a half years at Barnes & Noble to writers, to dreamers, to creative people. And it was all fed by the lessons that I learned through Julia Cameron. No, I didn't have a blessing. But what, what I had, I had the testimony of what having her as a tool had done to me as a creative that was on this journey of wondering, who am I? Who is this who? Who? Why does this who think he's got to take over everything that I do? Who? Well, you ask questions, and then you question answers. Well, in Julia Cameron's brand new book, she deals with the subject of not only anxiety, but vul vulnerability. That, that people of creativity are constantly vulnerable, and we're easily hurt. And, and so we quickly put away the things that we create because we don't feel like that's what we need to do. Stephen Furtick today said, he says, this is not about a feeling. This is about faith. Wow. Hold on a second here. You're right. How many times have we said, well, I'm just not feeling it right now. Well, you know what? Put some faith in the game then. Get, get your hands dirty a little bit. Because creative people are vulnerable. And we decide that we don't want to write. We don't want to go into the kitchen and cook. We, we just want to just mope, complain. The thing is, that's the best time to do it. Anxiety is actually fuel. You know, you got your hopes up high or you got that fear of failure. Oh, man, that's one of my greatest times to be a writer. And she's right. It's fuel. But with vulnerability, what happens is, is that when you shut down, you're going, I don't know what to write about. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, that's exactly what you should do. Answer the question. The question is, why don't you know how? What, what's happened here to where suddenly there's a light switch? That's your subject. Who is in control of your who being? And if there's something such as vulnerability that's getting in the way, then create something around it. If you're a songwriter, do a song about it. If, if you're a business leader and your team sucks and you don't know what to do about it, write about it. Be honest with yourself on the page. Look, we, we don't live a perfect life. You're never going to get a perfect life. And if you're ever given a perfect team, trust me, it's going to last about two or three weeks. It doesn't matter what kind of a deep-headed driver you are of success. You're not always going to have daily victories. It is absolutely 100% completely natural to want to shut it down. To go feel sorry for yourself. Oh, there's that feeling again. 
it is absolutely 100% perfect for you to want to listen to what the situation is. But the question is, what got you there? Well, let's deep frag it. Let's ask the questions. Let's question the answers. When you have those moments and those mindsets where things aren't happening the way that you envision. For instance, like, I'm not having a good month with the podcast. After two record-setting listening months, I mean brilliant listening patterns, I thought maybe something was truly popping. Well, it's 100% the exact opposite in this moment of now. And through defragging, I'm asking the question, do we need to make a change? No. We don't need to make a change. Well, tell me why we don't need to make a change. Is it time to create a new format to be able to do things differently? And what came out of my defrag writing instrument was something that really caught me off guard. I don't quit anything. What happens is, is that by listening to myself and defragging, I evolve with the shows, with the episodes. The things that I believe are bad habits eventually begin to fade because I'm not afraid of trying new ideas and new things. You keep the same formatics, but you try a different twist and you move through things in a way that says, you know what? Today, this is going to be based on faith. And when I say faith, you know what? I'm not going all about Jesus on you here. What I'm saying is is have some faith in yourself. Whatever you believe in, believe in yourself. Believe in that self that looks in that mirror every day and is asking, who, 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 who? And most of the time we're pointing the finger at you, 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 and you. But we don't point the finger at ourselves because that self in the mirror, that who, has no clue. Has no clue that as to why you have this unbelievable lack of desire and passion to just sit there and not create. Because you were born to create. You were born to breathe. You were born to move energy from the universe into the hearts of others. We all were. You make that choice. And that choice is, well, I'm just not feeling it. In her new book, Julia Cameron, really goes pretty clean when she says, you got to learn how to be honest with yourself. As a writer, as a creative person, I have more songwriters that, that stop on my show, Unplugged and Totally Uncut, And we talk about the ability to put lyrics with music, the orchestrations. And every one of them have said, it's a story. It's a story. And and it's like, how were you so honest with your story? And, And that's the thing about it. Through that honesty, their art is given air to breathe. But so many times when it comes to doing a a creative project, we think we have to do this and then we got to go do that. Well, it's not coming together like it did for this person over here. So therefore, well, I must be a failure. No, that's vulnerability. Yes, there's a lot of anxiety when it comes to art. There's a reason why they call it the starving artist, because the artist is starving themselves from being creative. So understanding who you are, I don't care if you work at a grocery store, if you work at a restaurant, if you never picked up a paintbrush and even put it near a canvas or even doodled on a page. I don't care if you've never done that. But what I do know in my heart that through your day to day survival, your creative energy has been present and you have no idea how strong it is. And how it can develop a greater relationship, not only with yourself, but how it can be used as a builder, as a healer. How it can reach out and do exactly what it's supposed to do. Do you think the sun wakes up every day, spreads its mighty ray of light across the sky thinking, I don't want to share today. I'm not in the mood. No. That and death are the guarantees of life. You get your son, and you get to die. Sometimes we don't get to make the right choice. Other times, we get a second choice. But don't stop, because it's not being met the way you think it should be met. You've got to ask the questions, question the answers. I happen to call it defragging. Break it down. I'm Errol, and that's defragging.